there's going to be a quick interruption because Tyler's going to make this opportunity for me to share with you the results of 10 weeks of work at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Um, the relationship with Rutgers is very important because it, if it hadn't been for this relationship with Rutgers, Axion wouldn't have a relationship with the Army Corps of Engineers. And without a uh, relationship with the Army Corps of Engineers, we wouldn't have successive opportunities in terms of what happened at Fort Leonard Wood because the Army Corps of Engineers was responsible for that. That bridge, the Army Corps of Engineers agreed to sponsor because the replacement with our materials was going to, was 2x what it would have been with wood. But their other a priori assumption was that if there was virtually no maintenance after eight years, this bridge would pay for itself. Yes, the Army Corps of Engineers went back, did a study, discovered that the bridge required virtually no maintenance, and the bridge did pay for itself. And better than that, there is an expected uh, life of the bridge today of an additional 40 years. Okay, what, I, what I'm going to do here pictorially as quickly as possible, because I don't want to monopolize the microphone, we built two bridges at Fort Bragg that have now are ready for the first tank crossing at Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Fayetteville is becoming a super base. There's a consolidation continuing in our armed forces. Part of Fort Bragg will actually start to accommodate tanks. Fort Bragg has almost 100 bridges, none of which were rated higher than five or six tons. So the decision was to, to consider what is the future of bridge construction at Fort Bragg. On June 11th, we expect the first tank to go over one of our two bridges. We have built two. This is a pictorial history of what actually happened. Part of bridge construction includes sheet piling, which effectively protects part of the substructure uh, that's near the bank where the, the waters could rise. This was not our product, but we purchased it. This is our product, a uh, part of it anyway. These, each of those long-looking missile-like structures are pilings. There are 21 of them on that flatbed. Each one of them weighs about 2,000 pounds. What you see on this flatbed are two different I-beams. The bottom I-beams that have the silvery bullets on them, those are actually two T's that are offset. One is inverted to the other, and then they are fixed with uh, steel screws and bolts. The, they are 18 inches. The I-beams above it happen to be 12-inch I-beams. The nature of the I gives us an opportunity to mold a structure that has enormous strength and design characteristics. Simply a picture of one of the beams being hauled off. The 18-inch I-beam weighs 3,000 pounds. This is simply an installation of the sheet piling. Uh, the pile driver decided that for him, cutting off the points was more attractive than driving the pilings with the points because even though the soil samples have been taken and there was not much rock to be concerned about, he felt as though having more surface area to drive the piling would be a much more sufficient way for him to do it. Besides that, he was very skeptical it was going to work in the first place. This is an example of one of our 46-foot pilings that is being spliced to North Carolina Department of Transportation guidelines. We took a 46-foot piling and made it into a 65-70-foot piling. Just f filling it through the uh, steel collar. Uh, more of the same, a longitudinal view. Um, I'll do this in sequence because I sort of like these photog photographs. The pilings are actually installed using a methodology where you have a constant pressure that's put on it and it shakes it and it gets it inserted. Now, and there's, it's still going on at this point. This is, the shorter pilings in this show you that they've been driven to refusal. The other pilings were all installed so that everything was lined up properly and then the sequential activity here was driving them to refusal. When they're all done, 
there's got to be some measurement taken, lasered off, and you need to cut them off. They, they use a jig and then simply use a chainsaw. Our materials are very conducive to using tools that anybody would use with wood. The one recommendation we make is that you use a carbide tip blade because the material tends to be pretty coarse. Uh, always nice to have a flat and square result. You can't see the bubble, but I know it's there. Uh, this is a uh, pile cap on the left-hand side of the screen that's being inserted over four pilings that have all been lasered and cut. The other pile, the sheet piling you can see is how that gets uniformly placed into the ground as well. Uh, here on the left side you see a pile cap and then on the right side of the screen you see a second pile cap. On this particular bridge there are four pile caps. Uh, another example of just field work that's done for uh, measurements and trimming. Nothing unusual, nothing unique. Um, not exactly sure that picture really shows you what you want to see, but what you're seeing here uh, is some of the uh, pile caps supporting each other. Nothing unique there. Okay. Um, one of the attributes of this bridge is that we are using less material than wood would have used. Uh, in the case of Warby State Park, we used fully 35% less wood than would have been required. I don't know the actual statistical term for these bridges. But the 18-inch girders are placed on the bridge in the same direction as the traffic. So they are running 90 degrees to the pile caps. Give me a chance to just catch up and read that. We're almost home. The process to build 37 and a half feet of bridge and 50 feet of bridge took 10 weeks, and we can do it faster because we learned a lot on this exercise. Um, this could be useful. Uh, this is the underside of the bridge, and what's exposed, and it doesn't matter if you see it or not, is uh, some wiring. There's going to be extensive testing and gauging done on these bridges. Uh, thermal expansion, very important. You need to know the temperature. All bridges have expansion and contraction attributes. So do the axiom bridges. This is almost finished. And what we, are, what we want to demonstrate here is that the way that the structure starts to displace weight what you can't see is how the girders, these 18-inch I-beams going longitudinally, are actually connected and supported to one another so that the weight transfer can take place on either side of any girder. When it's all said and done, you get railing, you get, um, you get decking put on, and you can now see that there's a finished part of the material that, again, all of ours, that gets placed there before the back going. And uh, this happens to be the commandant of the base, but we don't identify him. This happens to be our, this happens to be a 43-ton load. Each of these bridges is going to be rated at 71 tons. That's the weight of an Abrams one tank. There's the backfill. There's a little rating. It's done. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity.